guys, it's Kaven from True Champion Gaming. I co-run this channel with my brother-in-law Isaac, and this is Terry, also on True Champion Gaming, kind of our team coach, uh, big testing partner with mm -hmm. me. We've been running a lot of games recently. Mm -hmm. uh, we're both pretty committed to the game, going to be at Ascent, going to be grinding this game oh, yeah. every day, every other day, hours a day. So, you know, hopefully we kind of know what we're talking about, and uh, it's a big reason why we wanted to jump into what we're discussing today, which is a complete norm element card overview from the fractured crown set which is upcoming in august this is the second set for ga and it's actually a supplementary set which it's under 100 cards dawn of ashes was our first set it had like 275 cards 280, 280 with the alter version um and that was just a massive set way bigger than normal uh set sizes are for card games and this is a very small one however mm -hmm. It is not something that you can just dismiss. You know, in a set size like this, for most games, you'll get like a handful of cards mm -hmm. that'll actually be played, that'll have an impact. That is not the case for this. You're gonna actually want, like, I'm not just plugging our videos. You're gonna wanna watch every single color that we talk about because mm -hmm. they're actually like all impactful. So yeah. um, we did make a unique scale for this, for our series that we're doing here because it's not as easy to just give something in this game like, a generic star rating uh and also there's a lot of potential in this game for cards you know dawn of ashes being a 280 card set i think we both had maybe two to three cards that we were like yeah that's unplayable that's sure. a one star you know so it's it's definitely a unique system so i'll let terry explain yeah. our rating system so this set as caven was saying absolute banger set um we're talking probably a whole brand new meta yeah absolutely opening everything and that's why i think we're so excited to talk about it but to break it down it looks like this okay so a five star card a five star rating is going to be an absolute meta changing card something that's going to change the way that players play the game yep um may that be an effect may that be you know a card that's so powerful that people just have to respect it at all times there's a lot of different things and we'll get into that a four star card is going to be one that is an absolute meta staple it's something that's going to be in a lot of decks you're going to see four ofs in Lorraine decks, maybe in Rye decks, maybe in Xander decks. It's gonna, it, you know, it's really gonna spread across the format. Three star is you're gonna see it in decks, maybe not every deck. It's not gonna be an absolute meta staple, right. but it's going to be a really solid card. You're gonna see it maybe as a four of in a very specific deck. Yep. Um, a two star is gonna be more of fringe play, um, very situational, meta dependent, or a card that has absolutely just a ton of potential but it's just not, doesn't have the backup yet. Yep. And then lastly, one star, I don't think needs a lot of description. One star is from a competitive standpoint in this format, which is constructed, we consider it unplayable. Yeah. Um, so, I mean, sure, maybe it can get played in limited or something else, but what we're focusing on here is competitive play and where the meta is headed. One star is a very harsh rating. It means this card probably won't ever see play in its Grand Archive life. You know, obviously that can change. We don't know what cards are going to come out. But, you know, like a card like Discordia from Donna Masters, because I just want to give a quick example. Discordia came out. A lot of players were like, oh, this is a terrible GA mm -hmm. card. You know, this is one of the worst SRs. Mm -hmm. I would give that card, if I was raining Dawn of Ashes, a three or four star because it has that potential. Yes, in our current meta in Dawn of Ashes, it is a one, mm -hmm. right? It's a terrible card. It's unplayable, honestly. But that type of card has so much potential that it would, it would probably get more of a two, I guess, sure. because it does have that future potential. But anyways, you guys are here for cards. This will be one <laughs> of the longer videos because Terry and I like to talk about cards and we want to actually really talk about them. We, we did our homework. We have notes. You know, we're not just... We're not just making content, we're trying to really start a discussion. Mm -hmm. So this is gonna be the longer video because Norm has the most amount of cards. The future one should be a little bit shorter. Sure. We're gonna do a six part series where we talk about Norm, then fire, water, wind, all the advanced elements in one video, and then the divine relic, because there is a lot to talk about with d this divine relic. There is. Um, we also wanna start a conversation with you guys. So. You know, hopefully you can comment down below and tell us something that we might have missed because I want to hear that. I want to hear what we didn't think of. And hopefully you'll be learning a lot from us that you didn't think of when you first read this card or these cards. Also, there are a lot of tricky interactions with this set as well. So hopefully you'll learn maybe even some rulings or just all that. So let's just start right off with Bedivere. Uh We have a lot of SRs right at the beginning. So we might talk about some of these first cards a little bit longer, but... This is a three cost unique ally with taunt as long as you control another animal or beast ally. 
It has a class bonus where if you're level three or higher on death, you get a buff counter on each animal or beast that you control. Mm -hmm. And it's a one four. Yeah. So I rated this a four. Mm -hmm. I, I also rated it a four. It has a great body, great stat line, and the effect late game is kind of insane. Yeah. Um, in, a, in a tamer deck that's going wide, this is something that has to be killed. And if they are level three, it's kind of devastating because the amount of damage that you add across the board yeah. makes it harder to deal with everything. I mean, it's a strong card. No, and it's it's important to note too, this is the first time that we're seeing a new keyword, taunt. So in Dawn of Ashes, we had intercept where if you're getting an attack, your champion is getting attacked, you can use that ally to block mm -hmm. it. However, if you're another ally of yours was being attacked, too bad, you can't right. do anything. This taunt is going to force all the attacks towards it. Totally. If you do have two taunts, they can choose which one to do. But so this is actual board protection, mm -hmm. which is a new mechanic that we're seeing in this yeah. game. Now you can actually play, you know, your Grey Wolf or whatever and keep it alive mm -hmm. so that you can buff it with all your other cards. Totally. Right? I mean, yeah. for the Hearthstone players out there, yeah. I mean, you know how strong the taunt mechanic is. Taunt is crazy. It's, it's a very strong mechanic. Yeah. So we're going to see a lot of her in the future. The reason why I think this might not quite be that five star level mm -hmm. is that, especially in Sylvie decks, but in general with this game, you can get into a problem of having too many late game cards. Mm -hmm. And this can be played in the early mid game, which I think really helps to its strength, but it shines in that late game, right? Sure. And so you want to just be a little bit careful of that. Yeah, agreed. Um, in this game, you know, you have this unique mana system where you can play these huge cards right away, mm -hmm. but you're still limited to, uh, you know, advanced elements that you can't play until late or cards like this, which you want to play late. So that's a little bit tricky as like maybe a newer player in this game to mm -hmm. kind of see that value and keep that in mind. Like there's a lot of broken cards, but you can't play them all. Right? Yeah. And you're going to get that a lot in this set. Yes. Yes. Absolutely. Like, there's so many playable cards. So yeah. Um, I think I'm going to jump right into the second one, which is going to be Blanche, Sheltering Saint. So this card, I'm really excited for this <laughs> card. Um, but anyway, it's a unique ally, a cleric human. Um, it has level 2 plus fast activation, which is a new keyword. Yep. Um, fast activation, you may activate this card at fast speed. So just like a fast spell, you can play this, yep. even though it has a body. Um, you're going to hear us use the phrase something on a stick a bunch, I think. Yes, right this. yes. So this is going to be that. Yep. So let me talk about the ability, though. If another unit you control would be dealt non-attack damage, prevent an amount of that damage equal to the amount of cards in your memory. So this card definitely has some power. Uh, for me, I rated it kind of in the middle of a three and a four. Yeah. And, and I'll let you talk first because I know that you're excited about this card. Yeah, so I think this card's a five. Sure. And the reason why is because, you know, it's not necessarily the strongest card. Five might be overshooting it, but... The, the like this is our first hand trap in the game mm -hmm. this is our first thing that you know we have these fast spells that you can activate to give something additional health protect something deal some damage whatever mm -hmm. you know like we already have that kind of fast level interaction but this is a new type where it's now giving you an additional benefit after you've cast mm -hmm. it and like we still kind of have that with like a uh, uh floating memory plus one health mm -hmm. um the wind card Oh, uh, favorable wins. <laughs> favorable wins, yeah. thank you, geez. <laughs> yeah. um, So we already kind of have that a little bit with some cards, but this is a different type where now you're getting this 1-2 human mm -hmm. ally on the board, which is important because now, you know, I can cast this on your turn, protect something maybe, and then play a Phalanx Captain and mm -hmm. have that cost be reduced. Mm -hmm. Play, And then that's also buffing the attack and everything, right? right? So like having this 1-2 body on board can actually be a huge asset and you're protecting your board with the effect as well. So it's just, it's you're protecting your board and building your board. That's yeah, crazy. It is, it is. And I think that this card, um, and you're gonna see a lot as we go through this, there's a lot more interactive play. Absolutely. A lot more things that are happening. So a card like this really lets you put yourself in a situation where you have four or five cards in hand and you go pass. Yep. And yep. then they don't know what you're doing. Maybe they go, boom. Like you said, you get a human on the board, yep. which if you're playing like a human Lorraine tribal, obviously is great. Crazy, right. um, I So the card itself, its ability, I think is very meta dependent. Mm -hmm. Currently, um, any kind of what, like board wipe that we have, at least what's getting played, is more of a cleave ability and an yeah. attack. Um, but if board wipes ever become like spell damage across the board, this card gets infinitely better it's interesting because the way that it would work is you play this mm -hmm. it protects something else but then this would die mm -hmm. so sure. it gets a little tricky it right does. but 
Um, I do think that we have quite a few cards right now that are like, you know, deal three damage or something to an ally. And if you're trying to protect your Gildas or something from that spell damage, I mean, in in a in a ally rush deck against something like a fire uh, rye that's doing spell damage to try to keep your board board down mm -hmm. this is a game changer oh yeah 100 you know? so. 100 and i think the ability fast activation is an absolute five star yeah yeah um the card itself is is probably more of a four so yeah. i do agree so but, yeah i mean you see how in magic snapcaster mage restoration angel all these yeah. huge cards that have been meta defining they have that flash ability yeah. so i'm excited to see what else we see in the future with that so this next card is really interesting, and like you said, it already gets to the on a stick kind of part because this card, Capri uh, Capricious Lynx, uh, we'll probably say some card names wrong. Uh, yeah, we will. Um, it's a three cost uh, beast with pride four, and it has a class bonus on enter. Capricious Lynx loses all abilities until end of turn. So basically you're gonna get rid of that pride if you're a tamer. Mm -hmm. And then it's a three, three body. So this really shines in A, Tamers want those big early, or not even big, but Tamers just want early beast on the board. So that way you can use your young beast bonders and stuff. And this basically reads deal three damage and then stick around, right? Mm -hmm. Like we already have cards that just deal three damage to something like an ally. And that's, that's already being played in the DOA meta. Mm -hmm. So if you're playing this, attacking something for three, clearing a Gildas, right? Mm -hmm. And then even if you can't use this for a few turns because mm -hmm. of that high pride requirement, mm -hmm it's still on the board. Totally. It's, some, it's something that you can play eventually. So I guess we should get, uh, we might skip the rating <laughs> sometimes. So yeah, what did you rate this Four card? star. Yeah. I think this card is an absolute yeah. four of in most hammer decks. Like you said, yep. a three, three body for three is already above average. Um, so it getting to hit the board and swing for three can kill a lot of different things. Yeah. Um, can it add in a little bit of poke damage and then it, it has that three, three body. Sure, pride four, that's its only downfall, but um, strong card all around. And yep. it's Norm, so you can play it in any element, which is really, really strong. Yep, I, I rated, it, rated it kind of like a three or four. I think it just depends a little bit on like what can this kill, because I think if you're playing this to just attack into your opponent, mm -hmm. it's not as strong. Sure. It is still strong, but not as strong, sure. right? Yeah, yeah. But yeah, I gave it a three star, probably does deserve mm -hmm. closer to a four star, but not too much more to talk about. So mm -hmm. this is an interesting one for sure. We have Cunning Broker, which is a two cost assassin human with stealth and then you can tap it to remove two prep counters from your champion and draw a card and it's a zero three mm -hmm. so i actually i know that when this card was revealed there was a lot of hype about it i'm giving this a two star rating <laughs> that is pretty aggressive yeah um so originally if i was just giving this card a rating for its power yeah. i gave it a higher rating than i actually think it deserves sure. um i think that honestly the rating's closer to a three for me um, and that is because I feel like this card really only has one use right now. Yep. And two prep counters is a lot. When it comes down, it doesn't give you yep. prep counters. Nope. It has stealth, sure, but it doesn't have floating memory. It doesn't have anything else. Intercept, if it had one of those, this card would be insane. Yep. Um, but as it stands, really the only thing I can see this being utilized for, um, you know, you guys will know, I I'm a control mage. I play a lot of control <laughs> decks. I really love that in Magic and into this game. I'm very excited to see cards like this. Now, and Assassin has been your class so yes, far. Yes, I yeah, love yeah. Assassin. I love Xander. Yeah. Um, and I think that this card is an insane sideboard card for control mirrors. If a meta ever became like, there's control running rampant everywhere, this card would actually have some play because getting to draw cards late game with yeah. those prep counters. I mean, in set one, you didn't have extra prep counters. No. We really didn't have a lot of good ways to get them. But moving into this set, there and and as we talk more about these, you're going to see that there's a lot more ways to get them. Yep. Um, so I think that there is some play. I think it's more of a sideboard card than anything else. Um, so maybe your two's right. I gave it a three because I do see the power that it has in that mirror. Yeah. But other than that, it's very specific. Yeah. I mean, I think getting rid of two prep counters is not a resource to be taken lightly, right? Like that is a big resource to to use and it's it can be cleared still mm -hmm. right it, like it has stealth but it doesn't have, have mm -hmm. spell shroud so who knows how long it's going to stick around and you can only tap it to do this ability so you can't like remove six and draw right. it's not like enlightenment counters or something right 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 um so when you really look at this card if you play it on turn one or like the, the first turn that you play it and then you remove those prep counters you've now successfully cycled the card that is it you're yeah. not getting any additional benefits no. yet and all you have is now a zero three body on board and you've removed two important resources mm -hmm. from yourself. If this card now dies, sure, it may may soak up like a, a spell or something, but it also might just die to AOE, and then sure. 
you've really just done nothing with right. it. it. Its strength is, like you said, in those control mirrors where somehow you're really ramping those prep counters so it's not really hurting to use them up, and right. then it's just sitting there just drawing you card exactly. after card. But I think that's a really hard part to get to yes. with this card, which is why I rated it a little bit lower. Agreed. So we have a, a really cool one. I really like when cards are named after like a set. So we have Dawn of Ashes, which was the first set of this game. So it's a three cost unique domain, which I think all domains so far have been unique. Um, the upkeep cost is at the beginning of your recollection phase, reveal a card at random from your memory. If you do not reveal a norm element, you sacrifice the Dawn of Ashes. And then its effect is non-norm element cards cost one more to activate. So mm -hmm. I rated this a four. Uh, what did you rate it? A three. Okay. Yeah. So I think this is a really hard card to rate without mm -hmm. actually playing it because sure. a lot of it depends on, and there, there's two there's two big points with this. So one of the big points is a lot of it depends on how strong just a norm deck is, sure. right? Because if you play only a norm deck and you're not negatively affected by this and mm -hmm. you're just slowing your opponent down straight mm -hmm. up, that's obviously a very, very strong effect, sure. but this requires you to actually see Dawn of Ashes. So if you build this norm deck that you're sacrificing those elements, you're sacrificing not playing fire cards or water cards or whatever you would have chosen. And so you are inhibiting yourself. And then if you don't even see your Dawn of Ashes, why'd you do it, sure. right? So, and to, if you want to like not do a norm deck, then now all of a sudden you have to see the other card that we'll talk about in a bit that can negate the upkeep effect. Sure. Um, and you're also going to be inhibiting yourself with, you know, if you're playing grass and right. stuff or and wind. For me, I see this card way more as a, if the meta is very combo heavy. Yeah. If you're seeing a lot of Arcane Rise, if some new combo deck comes out where they're casting a ton of cards, things like that, yeah. then this becomes an, actually an insanely strong sideboard card. For sure. Um, and even, I mean, we're going to talk a little bit more about Fractals soon, and that's another way, too, yeah, that you can yeah. maybe mitigate putting cards into your memory and things like that, yeah. but we'll get to that later. Um, I just think that this card does have a lot of playability, um, especially if that meta is combo heavy. Yeah, I mean, if Rai's running around everywhere and, you know, they're doing all their zero-cost draw card mm -hmm. cane sites or... You know, just whatever they're, they're trying to combo out. You play this at the end of your turn, and you just go, you probably can't kill me next turn. It's mm -hmm. an Orb of Choking Fumes, essentially. That's yeah. how you can treat it. You can now play five Orb of Choking Fumes yeah. in one deck. Yeah, exactly. Uh, so we go, we're going to go to our next card, which is uh, Develop Mana. So mm -hmm. this is a mage action, three cost. Put a level counter on your champion. So you'll permanently, artificially increase your level by one. Right, and not it a level slow. up. It's not a level up. You don't get to... <laughs> actually bring out your level two Sylvie or whatever you're playing, um, you're just gonna get that level counter. Uh, it is important to note, we haven't talked about this card yet, obviously, but mm -hmm. there is a new champion that has an effect that, de that depends on level counters. Mm -hmm. And with this, you can essentially guarantee an additional draw. Sure. So that's a very strong synergy right there. But uh, I did rate this a four, and I, I am, I'm assuming that your rating might be a little bit different. Yeah, uh, yeah. this card, <sighs> I gave it a two. Yeah. Um, I definitely see the merit. I see where, like, for instance, with Pride and, and yeah. with Sylvie's, right? Get, getting a, a card that can just, boom, bring your level up early, really cool. Yeah. Um, I could see it in, maybe in some Rye decks, but they already have a card that does it a little bit better and draws you a card. It's not permanent, sure. but usually when you're playing that card, you're going for the but kill, But it's Arcane. Right? You can do this it on is turn true. one. It is true, and that is nice. But it is a lot to me. Three cost to level up one. I think it's really meta dependent. Sure. Because I think that if we see like what we're we've been talking about a little bit and getting into and we see all these allies, but at the same time, we think the format might slow down. So yeah. it's it's really, really one of those wash up cards because I think that if we have a slower format, then this card's insane. And okay. then I think yeah. that if it gets really, really fast, yeah. you probably don't want to spend three resources to level up. That's fair. I think this gives a lot of creativity now in this mm -hmm. game too because we've already seen a little bit more rogue level decks mm -hmm. where they're not running level threes and stuff sure um but now you could run like an aggro fire lorraine that's not going into level three but then you play this and you can do your devastating blows now and stuff mm -hmm. right and we've already seen that with cards like impassioned tutor sure. to like try to level you up and everything but this is a little bit more consistent however it is a spell so you're losing a lot of tempo so mm -hmm. it probably wouldn't work in a scenario like that but it does give a little bit more creativity mm -hmm. now you cannot run a level three champion and you can get to level three no mm -hmm. matter what class you are 
no matter what stage of the game you're at. I mean, leveling up is a powerful effect. It is. And you can't yeah. deny that. I, I can't deny that either. I'm just not sure. I, I mean, time will tell if yeah. three resources to level up is too much or if it's the right amount. Yeah. Uh, so the next card is Fast Cure, which is a action cleric spell. Two cost. If target opponent's influence is greater than yours, recover four. And it also has floating memory. So it is fast, which is very important. Mm -hmm. uh, we're also seeing another new keyword where it's uh, influence. So that mm -hmm. means your total memory in hand. Mm -hmm. So a really important... Oh, I, I rated this a five, actually, which is a little surprising. But I, I do think there's a good reason. That's the first five I think we have, yeah. Okay. So, uh, so yeah. Um, for you, a five. For me... I know early on I asked you, I was like, man, can I give things two star ratings? Like, this is hard. Like, I'm kind yeah. of fluctuating. Like but a four and a five yes, or something. Yes, or something yeah. along those lines. But I really was like, nope, I'm going to try my best to stick to one. I gave this one a three. Wow, that yeah. is quite a difference. Yeah, yeah. It, and it, I will say it was between a three and a four because this card does have a lot going on for it. Yeah. Um, one of the biggest things is obviously that, that text at the bottom, floating memory. Yeah. Uh, floating memory is huge. Um, granted, sure, maybe it might not be as strong with some cards we're going to see, but obviously it's a huge part of the game. Yeah. Um, and being able to put something into your memory at fast speed, um, I mean, I, I don't got to play cards that I don't want to on turn one. I yeah. want, you know, that <laughs> that's kind of nice. Yeah. No. no, and I don't want to like keep referencing cards that we're going to see, but it is important to talk about cards mm -hmm. like that we're talking about now because. There's a card in this set that banishes two cards from a graveyard, but mm -hmm. it's an ally, so they can only do it on their turn. You can activate this card at the end of your opponent's turn and put that floating memory in there so that you hopefully have a better shot of keeping that, right? Mm -hmm. And I think it's really the fast that is making me rate this card higher because sure. influence is also an easier thing to... Most cards that have like an influence effect are if your opponent's influence is higher. Mm -hmm. And doing that, a card like that on your opponent's turn is very vital because sure. they're going to draw for turn which already will probably put them above influence of you. And then they also might do something like a GCR or something, sure. right? And so if you're trying to do an influence effect on your turn after you've drawn for mm -hmm. turn, that's really hard to, you know, I mean, like the, the longer the game goes on, it can get easier. But um, I, I think that this is a easy card to actually pull off that recovery effect. And recovery is very strong. Mm -hmm. And it having static floating memory and not class bonus floating memory or anything means that even if you're milling this or discarding it, you're still getting an effect out of it, right? So I just, I think it's such a versatile card that is so strong yeah. that it, it, it's so consistent too. Totally. And, I yeah. think it's a great, a great control card as well. Yeah, for sure. Um, when you're sitting there and we're going to get into more stuff because like I we've, we've kind of spoiled a little bit. There's going to be a lot more interactive play, a yeah. lot more draw, go-esque play style potentially. Yeah. So this card fits into that really well. Yeah. Um, Gives you a little bit of life if the influence works out, but on top of that, it lets you get, like you said, floating memory in For fast. For sure. So our next one is Fractal Ooh. of Insight. And again, another, we have a lot of new st new type of stuff. So this is a Fantasia, which is a mage fractal for this one. It's on enter, you may rest Fractal of Insight if you do Glimpse 2. And then it has another new word, which is reservable. So when you're paying for a reserve cost, which is only like in reference to cards from hand, basically. Mm -hmm. Memory cost is from material deck, reserve cost is from main deck. Uh, you can rest it to pay one of that cost. Mm -hmm. So I gave this a three star. Mm -hmm. And that is only after seeing all of the cards from the sure. set. I initially wanted to rate this a little higher. Mm -hmm. And then I changed my mind a little bit. Sure. So, so I gave it a four star. Um, but I did rate this one as I went through. And our list started in norm, worked its way through. So this was yeah. the first fractal that I saw. Yeah. Um, and I know uh, we've had a little bit of conversation about fractals. I think these cards are really solid. Yeah. Um, fractals in general, I, I think that they have a ton of future in this game. I mean, you see in, in Magic, we have Mana Rocks. We have, you know, I mean, how many of you have played a Commander game and got Soul Ringed on turn one or, you know, played some Feldwar Stone or something that just kind of like gives you extra mana, right? A right. little bit of ramp. Now, this is a little bit different because, and this is where that argument sticks, right? It's our mana comes from how many cards are in our hand, yep. which is a lot different than playing lands, right? Yep. So in, in in that world, we have these. So playing a fractal doesn't actually ramp you. Ramp you. Correct. It's kind of pseudo-ramp. You're giving up a land 
in your hand that you're getting back each turn. Mm -hmm. So if you just always kept this card in hand instead mm -hmm. of playing it, you're getting that one sure. energy anyways, right? So the real benefit comes from the ability that you get yep. the first time you play it, yep. which this one is Glimpse 2, which, I mean, I really, really like this particular fractal in control, getting to, like, you know, fix your hand a little bit, you know, figure that kind of thing out, but also give you access to resources without putting cards down where... I don't know, man. I think there's a lot of play for these. I think we're yeah. going to see these for a long time. Also, with the influence keyword that we just yeah. talked about, it helps a lot for that. Totally. Because if you want to keep your influence low, now you can get a card out of your hand slash memory, totally. but still have the ability to cast cards, right? right? So um, you're basically getting the glimpse effect is really what you're mm -hmm. getting out of this. And I just think as a player, maybe I'm a little biased. I, I find those effects obviously very strong, sure. but I, I think I usually value them a little less than other mm -hmm. people, which is probably why I give this card a three and you gave it a four. Right, because yeah. I like the idea of having a grip of cards yeah. and then not having to utilize putting cards down in my hand if I'm going to cast multiple defensive spells on my For opponent's sure. turn. Yeah. And that's where I think these cards really shine. I, yep. I totally get your, your points when you talk about well, if you just kept it in your hand, it's still the same. Yeah, yeah. Like, I get that. Yeah. And I think that it, at, at its base level, totally. I yeah. think that these cards really definitely um, get better the later a game goes and the more reactive you play. Right. And yeah. I also just think it has the kind of worst effect of all the fractals. Sure. Um, but the important thing to note is this is norm. Yeah. You know? And I'm, I think it's the only norm one. It is. Water yeah. has a ton of fractals. So if you're playing water, you might not have room for this. But if yeah. you're playing wind, you might. Sure. You know, because you want it. So. Yeah. But let's let's go ahead and move on to the next one. So. Yeah. Oh. Uh, I'll let you do. Yeah. I'll let you do all the talking for this oh, one. Oh, man. <laughs> this card. This card is everything. Uh, so our next card is going to be Gawain, Chivalrous Thief. A unique ally with assassin ranger human uh, level two plus it gains true sight yeah. class bonus on champion hit you may sacrifice gawain if you do look at that opponent's memory and discard a card from it and it's a one one <laughs> it is a one one yeah that is the last thing that needs to be said for me uh absolute five star top three favorite card in the set yeah this this card um without diving into the card so that you but it for me this effect changes how people play against the assassin from here on out. Yeah. Right. And I'll let you. What did you rate it? I did rate it a five as well. Actually. Okay. Good. Yeah. So I, I I think that it was important. They know that. But yeah. Just alone. So playing against the assassin in general, and and playing against. I think this card is insane for tons of different assassin builds, aggressive mm -hmm. builds, mid range builds, control. Um, being someone that's a, a black mage in Magic that really likes hand hate. Um, this is kind of our hand hate in this game, right? right? No, it so, is. And people also um, really, really undervalue how important knowledge is. Yes. And so using this card to get knowledge of what your opponent has even, I mean, sometimes you might not get rid of the best card. Maybe mm -hmm. just get rid of, you know, one, one card that, you know, helps them get to where they want. But now on soul players players that are looking for those big combo kills at the end have to really really be careful right. about what cards they put down yep because if you're playing something early oh i'm gonna play this you know whatever i play early maybe i'm gonna play a fractal and you put these two cards down and you happen to put down or you need to tap out to play two allies or something like that and then an assassin plays gawain and swings in yeah now not only do they know every card that's in your hand but they get to get rid of your best card yep so for me, this is the perfect example of what a five star was, right? Yeah. It, it changes the way the game is played when you sit across from an assassin player. Absolutely. So, that this card, like I said, absolutely love this card. Yeah. Oh my gosh, this card is amazing. The so. fact that it is one one does mean it is definitely counterplayable. <laughs> Easy you know, to there, kill. There's a lot of <laughs> things that can kill a one one even on your turn, mm -hmm. you know. Um, but it is it is that meta defining card, mm -hmm. and I do agree. So. But yeah, we can move on to the next one, which is a very interesting <laughs> one. Um, we have Gentle Respite, which is a three-cost action cleric spell. If target opponent's influence is greater than yours, draw a card into your memory. And then it also has floating memory just always on the card. Mm -hmm. And then it's a slow. So like I said earlier, uh, sorry, I guess we can rate it first. Um, sure. When this card got spoiled <laughs> in the main Discord, yes. people kind of lost their mind. Yeah, they I was there. Thinking you were there too. Just how broken it is. Yeah. I gave this a two star. <laughs> yeah, uh, yeah, same. I gave it a two. We were messaging when that was happening about, yeah. hey man, uh, this card is a little weak. I just didn't see it. Yeah, you know, um, like we discussed earlier, you know, 
doing trying to get influence on your turn is a harder thing to pull off uh or the influence effect i should say mm -hmm. and it's a three cost which is quite a lot right mm -hmm. you're talking about best case scenario you're filtering the card and getting a free floating memory mm -hmm. which there are many other cards in this game that do that right now creative sure. shock and stuff like that for example yeah. right which obviously is a fire card and all that stuff but it's a lot less situational oh right? yeah this card i mean if it didn't have the floating memory text it would be an easy one yeah, yeah, yeah like so the floating memory gives it you know that little extra boost but yeah. at the end of the day like the only way i see this card really finding its home would be in a deck that's really spamming the board going wide and yeah. so your influence goes way down and then you're like well i want to continue materializing things and i also want to obviously keep cards yeah. in my hand so you play this but at the same time three to play this if you've been spamming the board is a little tough yeah and and playing it at slow speed means you're taking up your entire turn when you were moving because yeah. if you're playing a bunch of cards, you're moving, man. You're yeah. trying to go forward. So taking a, a turn and a half, a, like a half a turn to a full turn to get a floating memory and draw a card. Mm. Right. And especially when you can't play this on the first turn of the game. Yeah. Your opponent doesn't have influence. Mm -hmm. It can't be greater than yours. Right. So now all of a sudden you're talking about your, your second turn, the third turn of the game. You're mm -hmm. going to be playing a three cost thing that's mm -hmm. just giving you a floating memory. Like yeah. you might not have time for that. So I, I'm I'm a lot more. I think this is one of the. I think there's a lot of cards in this set that are a little bit baby that sure. people are going to be like, oh, this card is crazy, sure. and then they're going to play with it and find out that it's not as good as they thought. Right. And we could absolutely be wrong. Yeah. Uh, I've watched a lot of these types of videos, set reviews and stuff. Uh, no matter how good a card player is, they're usually wrong about sure. at least half of them, right? Yeah. Like it's it's definitely hard to just theory theorize why a card is good or bad sure. until you're actually playing with it. So that is an important thing to keep in mind. 100%. But we're just, we want to start that discussion and, and just yeah. talk about these cards. Definitely. So I'll talk about this next one. It's yeah. called Imperious Highlander. This card's pretty cool. It's a, a warrior human. For three cost, on enter, Imperious Highlander gets plus X attack until end of turn, where X is the amount of allies target opponent controls more than you control. And she has a base 2-2. Two -two. Yeah. So... I, let's see, I gave this card a three star. Gave it a three as well? Yeah, because, you know, this card, I don't see this card being played in every deck. I don't see this card finding its way into every champion, finding every element, and, yeah, being, a, yeah. and being a contender. This is really what this card is, and this is the first time I think we're really bringing it back into the discussion, is going to be that kill spell on a stick. Yep. You play this card in a deck that does not play a lot of allies, and your opponent has one problem ally, hopefully, right? Maybe a guild this, maybe yeah. a phalanx captain or something like that. And then they have three allies out. We drop this, it becomes a 4-2 because it does count itself. Yes. So you'd have two last, boom, it becomes a 4-2 and we swing into that phalanx captain. Kill off something and then, yeah, it's just a 2-2 two -two now basically, sure. but a 2-2 two -two on board after you've killed something is no. really good, yeah. And we are seeing a lot of those kind of mitigating spell damage yeah. abilities in cards where this is a kill spell that is in the form of an attack. Yeah, we are is, also seeing a lot of stop attack cards. Though, you're, not too, so you're not wrong. You're not wrong. I mean, the format is slowing down, no. and I am keeping that in mind mm. while uh, rating a lot of these cards. Sure. You know, obviously, we don't know the meta of the next no, set. No, no idea. Once you watch all of our videos, quick plug, uh, <laughs> you'll understand Shameless. that there's there's quite a lot of slowdowns coming. Yeah. So we have uh, a very interesting card um lancelot goliath of asa it's a four cost unique ally hindred or uh, hindred hindred hindered hindered, hindered. hindered. thank you uh, <laughs> this ally enters the field rested class bonus level two or higher lancelot gets plus two so it would become a two five which is a very beefy ally and then on attack you may pay three um that is a new little thing as well that means three reserve costs so three from hand or if you have fractals or something mm -hmm. you can use those if you do, Lancelot gets plus three attack until the end of turn, and then it's a two, three. So, a lot of text on this. <laughs> Usually when cards have a lot of text, they're pretty good. However, it might be a hot take, but I actually rated this as, I think, a two star. Uh, yep, I rated it as a two star. Uh, you know, I this was one of those ones that was kind of in between for me, but I ended up definitely on a two star as yeah. well. I thought that you and I might argue about this, yeah, yeah. so I'm glad that we're not. Uh, this card obviously a powerful card it right. does some powerful things that hindered that text really i think takes this card from being one of the strongest cards we have in this game yeah. to being 
a bait. Yeah. Something that comes in as rest and isn't giving you floating memory or an on enter effect or mm -hmm. anything like that. You play this, they pop it, or they, they just swing into it or whatever. Mm -hmm. Right. What did you just do? Sure. Nothing, right? And like obviously it's meant to be like class one level two. It becomes harder to clear and everything, sure. but I don't know, man. It's it's it doesn't have its time yet. I think this is gonna be a bait card because it just reads like such a strong card. Mm -hmm. And then I think though, when you're really gonna get into the game, you're gonna find that you don't really have the mana to pay for its plus plus three attack. You're just gonna find it doesn't really just doesn't really get there or do anything. Mm -hmm. But I do think that if we get some sort of like, you know, maybe in the future when it's like wake up target champion or something like that um and you can pay for the effect once or even twice because that is not once per turn no if you attack with it pay three get the plus uh attack and then restand it and attack with it again you can pay that additional three sure it's going to cost you a lot sure but you could in theory kind of make this like a combo with a mad mage card yeah. where it's like just never like non-stop damage basically yeah. but I just think it's very situational and it, it doesn't really have any synergy right now. You know, I wrote in my notes that if it did not have the hindered ability, yeah, this card has so much potential to just be broken. To sure. become a five star card that becomes a one shot kill or something, yeah. right? I mean, Later you build in the game. a deck around it. 100%. Right? Yeah. We don't we don't have those cards yet, yeah. but it has that kind of power. Yeah. Yeah. So we have Lurking Assailant next, which is a three cost ally assassin human with stealth as long as it's awake, which is another new thing that we're seeing. Uh, level one or higher, it ha it can retaliate against attackers while not defending, and it's a two, three. So what that means is that normally what uh, defending re refers to is the attack target. Mm -hmm. Now, however, if you attack my champion and I have this on board, I'm not intercepting it, so my champion will still take damage from your mm -hmm. attack, but I can retaliate back to you. Mm -hmm. So. It, it is a very interesting card. Sure. I I actually got this wrong when I saw it for the first time during the Creative Shock uh, video and totally talked about it having a different effect because I misread it. Um, but uh, it's it's a very interesting card. So I actually rated this a two star though. Even mm -hmm. though it's interesting, uh, well, I'll, I'll let you rate it. Yeah, I mean, uh, this card to me is a glorified double blocker. I mean, so if it swings at one thing, it can help block with it, basically, like block, if you will. So like, it can't retaliate if it's rested. It has to be a right, right, right. Yeah. So like, let's say you had, I don't know, like your uh, the new taunt chick. We haven't talked about her yet, have we? Shoot. <laughs> uh, well, we'll talk about her in a minute. So if someone were to swing into that because they had to, yeah. and this was here awake, yeah, you could actually put that two damage towards them as a read. Yeah, it helps kill something, sure. but it doesn't really block it. The yeah, original right, target right, right. is still going to take damage. Exactly. And, and I think that's why it is so low for me. Yeah, and um, oh, I gave it two stars. I well. really see it in you know very specific situations where you're playing against something that has like a lot of like one health and two health attackers mm -hmm. that's like spamming and everything. Mm -hmm. This can help like not die while clearing board. I don't know. It's it's very. It's not great. It's not great. Yeah, yeah not I, I don't really like it. <laughs> yeah. We can just move on to the next one. Ooh, okay. So this is the first, I think, waifu of this set. <laughs> yeah. If, yeah. <laughs> so um, her name is Morgan Soul Guide. Uh, she's a unique ally, uh, cleric mage human. Level one, prevent all non-attack damage that would be dealt to Morgan. Level two plus, your opponents can't recover. That's a strong effect. It is, yeah. And then class bonus, at the beginning of your recollection phase, you may glimpse one. If you don't, recover one. Yeah. Um, for me, I gave this card a four. I gave it a five. So first off, I want to say I don't think the class bonus is very necessary. Sure. I don't think you have to be a major or a cleric to really mm -hmm. use this card. I think the most strength is in the your opponents can't recover mm -hmm. effect. But what also makes that better is that it has a little bit of self-protection uh, given into it as well if you're level one, which sure. you will be if you're playing this, to right. be honest. Um, and, you know, it's, it's still three health. That's, like, fairly beefy. Um, but I think we are going to that slower meta. And you'll see as we go further into this set, there are so many recovery cards. There and is. you're going to hear us, I think, talk about sideboard cards a lot in the set which does probably make this maybe more of a four yeah because i think it has to probably be more of a specific sideboard card than just a generic like i think this is going to change the meta kind of sideboard sure. card because i think sideboard is going to get very tight in this format um but eight, eight cards is not going to be enough it, yeah um but bringing this in against that control matchup that's game plan is just to sit there and just recover non-stop mm -hmm. 
invaluable mm -hmm. honestly you know i mean it, it does really just change how that's going to go i think they put in a ton of recovery into this set and then said let's also give him morgan because yeah. otherwise what are they going to do well think about this card i don't know i know you and i have played it a lot and maybe yeah. some of the viewers will too the aggressive lorraine versus xander matchup right sure that matchup comes down to a very very crucial moment where either as the xander player you stabilize yeah. and you start healing right yeah because you always get really low yeah. in that matchup, and then you recover back up. Mm -hmm. Now, this is a human, which is right. something to think, right? So, sure, you're not going to get the the class bonus, but we don't really care about that in this, no. right? Yeah. So now you've got another human that's hitting the ground. It's a 1-3. Yep. Sure, the body's not that scary, but that level 2 plus of not allowing the Xander player to recover, playing this yeah. card when you know they need it, or they're about to level up, you, you know you're pushing them hard. Yeah. It's kind of a backbreaking card. And they flip over two library of assault. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. It's not gonna die. Yeah. You know, so and, and it might be interesting because it might actually force decks like that to run more attack cards. 100%. And, and kind of that alternate thing that you gotta you gotta deal with this, otherwise you're not stabilized. Hundred you know? percent. So but yeah, definitely a, a interesting card. And we have another really ordinary but interesting <laughs> card here too. It is a three cost ordinary bear. It is an mm -hmm. ally tamer beast bear. Mm -hmm. Pride two. Class bonus, floating memory, and it's a 2-3. So it's actually really similar to a Dawn of Ashes card, Grey Wolf. It's mm -hmm. a 2 cost 2-2 two, two with Pride 2. That's all it is, and it's a beast. Mm -hmm. But that's a really important thing, and actually why I rated this ordinary card a 5-star rating, which seems insane. Yeah. But So for me, I rated it a 4-star. Okay. And that's because that's I, still act really high. I actually followed our ratings, unlike yeah. somebody I know. Yeah, yeah, uh, all right, all right. <laughs> But that being said, uh, this card is an absolute, if you're playing Tamer, four yeah. of forever. If you're a Tamer player or want to be, pick up four foil ones because you're going to be playing this for yeah. a long time. Yeah. This card, uh, the fact that it has floating memory, like you said, like you've played a lot of Tamer. I know you were I've really, tried. yeah, you've I've tried. You've, you've really tried to make it work yeah. and it, we just didn't have the support. And every single time that I built a Tamer deck, I said, man, I really wish I had eight Grey Wolves. Mm and now you do there right you go. and yeah. capricious links is also a very similar role it's that early beast that gives you some value and stuff but dude ordinary bear young beast bonder turn one mm -hmm. wipe my board i got two floating memories <laughs> and it's going to be a hard board wipe when you're sitting down a four or five ordinary bear that can actually start attacking you really quickly right, right? like um it's probably not a five on our scale because it's not meta defining most likely but i think in terms of just the card strength it is insane it really fills that role that tamer needs 100 um, percent. great card if we are talking about a card that's meta defining <laughs> that is peace of Lore union this yeah. is one that like i don't think anyone's gonna argue is a five this sure. is a meta defining card mm -hmm. four cost action cleric spell activate this card only if you have not declared an attack this turn until the beginning of your next turn, you and target player can't declare attacks, banish peaceful resolution, and it's slow. So essentially, you kind of almost have to like start like task this at the start of your turn. You're not gonna be able to do any attacks, but then against specific decks, this reads take another turn. Mm -hmm. Those cards are always broken. This card is yeah. if it's not my favorite card in the set. Um, it's probably my second or my third. It's, it's right up there. Absolutely in top three for me. And and as a Xander player, yeah. this is the card that we needed because this card particularly just works perfectly in our game plan. Yeah. Um, you stop the Lorraine player from being able to pressure you, and you get to put four cards down, and then you get to flip them with Lexum, yeah. right? And get get the effects. <laughs> the, but yeah. but what really is scary about this card because it's not even just that. It's also like like. In Magic, we have Fog Effects, right? Mm -hmm. Which is a card you play that makes it so you don't take any combat damage or whatever. Um, you can play this early on. If you yeah. feel a lot of pressure and you need another turn to kind of like catch back up, yeah. um, this is a card that can do that. But I think where the merit to this card, which by the way is a common. Yeah, this has SR text. <laughs> oh, 100%. You are text. Yeah, you know, th like this throw card, a signature on dude, this. Dude, this card's nuts. This yeah. card is very strong. But imagine you get into that late game against that Xander deck, that Xander control deck, which we think blue is going to be pretty powerful this set. So if we see that, being able to chain these mm. for two turns, yeah, God forbid, three turns, yeah, like that just ends the game. If this was some sort of material deck card that mm -hmm. cost, you know, one, two, whatever, mm -hmm. whatever cost it had that you could play one of, you had access to, that'd be really strong, mm -hmm. right? The fact that you can put this in your main deck 
and play four of them theoretically mm -hmm. yeah. back to back to back to back. Yeah, that's insane. It's insane. The card. I mean, we can, honestly, I think we. I have to cut us off because yeah, yeah, I yeah. think I could talk about peaceful reunion for an entire and like video. what it does. Yes. But yeah, it's, yeah, it's strong. Trust us. Yeah. Like that, that is one that I am very confident in yeah. saying. Like we're not wrong about it. Mm -hmm. Like there, there's no way. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, yeah, so we have prismatic sanctuary which is a three cost unique domain. Most domains are unique, I think. And uh, upkeep at the beginning of your recollection phase, reveal a card at random from your memory. If that card is not fire, water, or wind, sacrifice Prismatic Sanctuary. So if you reveal an advanced element or norm, you get rid of this. <laughs> but it does do the Trisket effect, which is it gives you fire, water, and wind elements. Yep. Uh, I gave this card a two. <laughs> which might surprise some people and i think it also does kind of hit on the nose for a lot of people too. so this card is the card that i am most excited from a deck building standpoint yes because this card just gives you so many incredible options it just screams creativity 100 percent. now i rated it a two yeah but that's yeah. because right now i don't know it's it's kind of fringe you're not going to see a lot of it but i promise you eventually one day yeah. you're going to sit down at a tournament and you're going to be like, man, you know, uh, I did okay today. I, I didn't top. And you're going to look at the top decks. And there's going to be somebody that just took the whole event. Yeah. With, yeah. with Prismatic Sanctuary. Yeah. And is, and is just abusing. I mean, we already know that being able to utilize three elements is just an insane power. Right. right? So if you can find a way to negate the negative side of this, right? Just destroying it or, or, or build a deck around it. Yeah. And there's going to be a lot of ways to do it. We're going to talk about a card yeah, that helps yeah. you in a little bit. Right. But also, I think that the the sky's the limit for a card like this. Yeah. So you could play against the Prismatic Sanctuary deck and then play against a different one and they'd be completely, completely oh, different decks. Oh, for sure, for sure. And it's really interesting because kind of like uh, Dawn of Ashes being used as more mm -hmm. of an orbit choking fumes. Mm -hmm. You don't have to build a deck around it, right? Mm -hmm. You can play this on your turn for three and then do that, you know, big water spell damage card. That doesn't <laughs> exist, but you get my idea, right? Yeah. Like if you're playing a fire deck, but there's this gra uh, wind card that you really want to use as a kill spell or like that final push, you can play this and then play that. Mm -hmm. And it doesn't matter if you, you're not going to get to the upkeep, right? It's kind of like, it feels a little bit similar to Veruk, where it's mm -hmm. like, I think this card could have strength on the turn that you play it, mm -hmm. right? And so it, it's definitely, this is, again, another one of those cards that we could just talk about forever, but we don't think it's very good right now, so no. we're just going to kind of skip get, sure. skip past it a little bit. So we have Resolute Stand here, three cost action, uh, level two or higher, you can activate it without paying its reserve cost. So you can, if it's the only card in your hand, you mm -hmm. could play it. You just have to skip your next draw phase. Mm -hmm. But its effect is if target unit would be dealt to attack damage this turn, prevent three of that damage. And it is this turn. So it's not deflecting edge where it's preventing the next three attack damage. It's more of a veiling breeze effect that is preventing three damage every single time of only attack damage mm -hmm. for the whole turn. Mm -hmm. And it is obviously fast, of course, as well. So I did rate this a five, I believe. Yeah, I did yeah. rate this a five. I originally rated this a little bit lower, but... I'm going to, this is one that I think after recording our first video, I yeah. want to go back and say, I actually give this a five. As yeah. Well. Yeah. Pulling because, a little bit of an olive there. A hundred percent. Because I just think of how much I've played against Win Lorraine, right? Yeah. And how much you think about that Valley Breeze and you think about yeah. all, all these cards that all the time they're there in the back of your mind. Yeah. You know, you, you play around them, you even favorable wins and things like that, but a, a damage prevention effect like this. Sure. It's just attack. Yeah. And you don't have to use the level two ability where right. it's only one. I mean, you, you can use this for its normal three. And I think that this card is just against ally decks and especially in an ally heavy meta or in an on soul meta or something along those lines, you're going to see a lot of decks playing yeah. for this. It, it makes me not want to play an ally deck because mm -hmm. I think about playing against some sort of wind deck that's going to have Veiling Breeze and oh this. Oh my gosh. And so you're talking about Veiling Breeze, they only have, need to have two cards in their hand. Mm -hmm. And this, they can even play with just one mm -hmm. um, if they want to sacrifice their draw. So they can do a lot on their turn and then just pass with a really low hand size and protect themselves completely, mm -hmm. which is just terrifying. Mm -hmm. And so... The cool thing about this too is that it's not completely like Valiant Breeze where it's only for protecting your champion. You can just pick a target sure. unit. So if you're against an ally deck that's not going to spell damage something and you just really need to keep that Phalanx Captain alive or something, mm -hmm. which we always reference Gildas and Phalanx Captain. I, mean, I don't know they're why. Strong cards, they're strong cards. They're, they're strong allies. Yeah. yeah. So, But if you really just need to keep that alive so you can go for the game on the crackback, 
resolute stand it yep. give up your draw make sure that that buff is going to stay on that board and yeah i mean it's it's honestly just a crazy card it, it is meta defining because now any time that your opponent has one card in their hand you have to be like what if that's a resolute stand yeah you know so you can uh take the next one yeah for sure so this next one is going to be right of realm and this is that card i was talking about when we were talking about uh prismatic sanctuary right so Right of Realm. It's an item, garden accessory, guardian accessory, and cost three, which I believe this is the first item we have that does not go in your material deck. I think so. Is yeah, that correct? Yeah. I think so. Um, but anyway, so you can play four of this card. Whenever you activate a domain card, you may sacrifice Right of Realm. If you do, that domain enters the field without any of its upkeep abilities. So completely gets rid of the big red flag of every single domain. Yeah, right. Um, and then on on top of that, they decided to add the floating memory text. So yeah, which gives it even more power. Now right? that yeah, you're sacrificing it, giving out that card, but then you're just using it again later, right. basically. Yeah. So this was one of the ones that I kept two ratings with. Yeah. Um, okay. I gave it a two. Yeah. Because it's super fringe. Yeah. Right? It's it. The deck does not really exist yet. It doesn't even seem like it'll probably be that powerful no matter right away. There's not yeah. a lot of backup for it. But with cards like um, Prismatic Sanctuary, this card's insane. Yeah. Right? Like, if you can happen to play this card into, into a domain early enough, which that is quite an intensive turn. Right. Because that is going to cost you a lot of uh, resources to play those. But if you can make that happen or in the span of two turns... Um, I mean, you get to play these very, very overpowered cards with no right. drawback. Right. So, so I think that that's huge. And then obviously, floating memory. Yeah, I'm basically at two because of card pool. Sure. You know, if we had some sort of stadium that was like human allies cost one less to mm -hmm. uh, to play or something like that, which you know that could definitely be a stadium one day. Sure. You know, I, I think like really trying to just glimpse through your whole deck and like just draw like crazy and get right of realm and that out and then just like go off the races would be really strong. I just don't think that we really have those domains yet that are like played on turn one and you win, yeah. right? Um, so it, it's it's kind of just like definitely keep an eye on it, mm -hmm. you know, and uh, just see. So I am going to take this next card. Okay, <laughs> so two cost scavenging raccoon. It's an ally tamer animal raccoon, no class bonus. On enter, banish up to two target cards from a single graveyard and it's a one one. So this is one of the big reasons that floating memory basically gets almost nerfed in this set so we have the new level three merlin which is giving people a reason to play the level two merlin which is going to be able to interact with your floating memory and banish it and stuff and then we also have this and those are the the two biggest cards that are like if you just let floating memory sit in your graveyard you do slow speed floating memory or whatever you have it's just going to eat it right up you mm -hmm. know and so I did rate this a five star actually, um, and I literally my notes just say goodbye floating memory. <laughs> it's crazy. So I gave it a four star. Yeah. Um, I think the card, I mean, the ability is insane, right? Yeah. It is a one one body for two, so really you're playing this for its body, yeah, for its, its ability, for, yeah, for its yeah. effect, right? Um, I mean, I just keep going back to a play where you know you're playing against, you know a Luxum deck or a Crux deck, one that's really pushing for level up as fast as they can. Yeah. And you just, they play their turn one, you know, they set themselves up with a creative shock or, I mean, hopefully they would do that on your turn so they could walk around right. this. But if they didn't... But, you know, f uh, f Ideal Thoughts or something, sure. right? Or uh, Honorable Vanguard Cremation Ritual. Exactly. There's a lot of plays that just let that sit in there. Exactly. You know? And this card basically says no. Yeah, it just ate up what... All the setup that you just took your entire mm -hmm. turn to do, nah. Yeah, just get rid of it. Yep. And and like you said, it, there, this Merlin from last set both have those abilities to get rid of things. This can get rid of. It doesn't have to be floating memory. Nope. So like there there is worlds where you get rid of other things. Like let's say fire, fire elf. Yeah. Right. Like fire yeah. elf, rending strike cards that they need. Um, melody cards, like anything that you need to get rid of. Um, for when they're trying to combo kill you or anything like that if you use this before they get to that point then you're in a really good spot this this is something that any card in the future or any you know engine in the future that wants to rely on the graveyard always has to worry about this yes because it is not class bonus it's norm anyone can play this yeah. you know 
And it is interesting too, because this actually can make its own engine, right? Mm -hmm. You could play this in an arcane Rai deck and use it on yourself. You mm -hmm. go arcane site, draw a card, gain a level, arcane site, draw a card, gain a level. And you've, you know, there's zero cost. <coughs> you haven't used any memory or uh, reserve cards from hand or anything. Yep. And then you play your raccoon and you banish those two cards. Now all of a sudden you're gaining four levels sure. that turn from, yeah. from a raccoon. Yeah. And you're turning those arcane cards that you want to get banished with Stormseer to gain those levels that you can't banish because mm -hmm. their effect doesn't do it or whatever. Now you're actually getting a positive out of playing your arcane cards, yeah. which is just crazy, you know? So, right. And I think there will be more interactions like that the longer totally. this game happens. So. And you better believe, I know that this game has a lot of similarities to like a Magic the Gathering feel, yeah. like that, that Western game. Um, and so with that, um, this card, eventually we, I... I can't imagine not seeing graveyard strategies eventually yeah where you want to get a bunch of stuff in your graveyard reanimate big guys yeah, yeah. or you know combo out with something that's there um and this card it's already already lurking it's, it's in the shadows. already there yeah. so so it's a strong card for sure so our next card seeking shot is a one cost attack with level two or higher true sight which is very nice <laughs> uh, it's class bonus is that it can't be retaliated which Really important to note, you actually can't do this class bonus. Mm -hmm. There is no ranger champion in the game currently, so definitely keep that in mind. I would say it's kind of negligible. You're sure. not really, like, it, it's it's a nice bonus, but that's all it is. It's yeah. a bonus. It's not the reason to play the card. No. As long as the attacker is attacking a human ally, seeking shot gets plus three. So it goes from a one with true sight, if you're level two, to a four. Mm -hmm. uh, I did rate this card a three. I gave it a two. Okay. So I gave it a three because I think like it actually could even go up to a four or something, just depending on the meta. Mm -hmm. um, we've already seen humans be very strong. Mm -hmm. And if you let them kind of just do their thing, they get out of control. And this is a really good card to put into a deck that has a hard time dealing with that and just goes, boom, kill shot for one, right? Sure. Um, and so I, I think it really just is meta dependent. That's yeah. really all I have to say about the card. You know, I do, I, you know, you say it and I read it again and again and I think to all those matchups and all those people, I know you guys have played against it a million times too, win Lorraine, right? Yeah. And I'm going to bring up Phalanx Captain again. Which I is know, a, which, right, right. It's a hard thing to kill, But right? a lot of those big, beefy humans that stack mm -hmm. have four health. Exactly. Yep. And, and that's where this was built. I yeah. also think that if we're in a heavy assassin meta, the level two true sight isn't you know, negligible. Like, being able to kill, you know, yeah. different stealth creatures stealth allies is 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 a thing you mentioned you know that one that you remove two prep counters and draw cards yeah. being like that sideboard card in those control sure. mirrors this could also be a sideboard card for the sideboard card right <laughs> yeah right i right, mean right. You, you really could just see all that kind of stuff yeah. so fairly simple card though so we'll just move on to the next one mm -hmm. we have stalwart shield mate this is a two cost ally with taunt and floating memory and it's mm -hmm. a zero two so I did actually rate this a four, Same. and uh, I start. think it's just a good defensive card for aggro, mid-range, and control. Mm -hmm. And you just don't see that very often. No. Usually it's like, this is a card that aggro wants to play. This is a card that control wants mm -hmm. to play. No, this is like, it protects your board, it protects your life, it protects whatever you're trying to protect, uh -huh. and it's still giving you that floating memory right. resource. And it's really generic, easy to play, low cost. I think it just checks a lot of boxes for consistency. 100%. I don't yeah. got anything else to say about it. That's, yeah. that's right on the nail on the head. All right, so I'll let you take the next one. Yeah, sure. Steady Verse. Steady Verse is an action. Cleric Tamer Skill Melody. Class bonus, the next Harmony Action card. You activate this turn, costs one less to activate. And then draw a card into your memory is its main ability. Wow. Um, so this card, I gave it a three star. So it's funny because, like, if you don't know much about GA and you just read this card seems terrible sure right? sure but Cycling, i gave it a four yeah. star yeah because it's a it's so like it's it's essentially just a filter card which is and isn't good like mm -hmm. this game has so much like glimpse and stuff sure. i don't think filter is very good right sure. like i think filter needs to be valued a little bit less uh but where it really gets crazy is we have these cards already like discordia from mm -hmm. dawn of ashes and some other cards that we're going to see in this set that really vibe with melody and harmony yeah. and like i think that that is a archetype that could really just take off right and this kind of card in there is just like slight support but the more that that gets added in really just like starts to define that whole archetype sure and, and i think yeah. that that's why i gave it a three because yeah. i feel like that 
it's very specific, right? To that yeah. that melody harmony deck tamer deck. Yeah. But it will absolutely be a four of in that yeah. deck. Because and once you start pairing it with all those other cards, exactly. it really makes it so much stronger. For sure. Melody and harmonies don't have to have amazing effects when you play them. Mm -hmm. They just kind of have to be decent. Yeah. Good enough to play. Exactly. Uh this I'm gonna okay. Thieving cut. Thieving cut. When this got revealed. A lot of people were like, oh, goodbye, Juggle Knives, you know, like, really, really thinking it was good, and this is actually, well, I guess I should read it, right? So, two cost, attack, assassin, dagger, prepare one, you may remove a preparation counter from your champion as you activate this card, on hit, if it was prepared, draw a card, and it's a three damage attack. Now, two costs for three damage is kind of the standard for attack mm -hmm. cards, so things like Savage Slash are 2-2, two, two, but it has the floating memory. Yeah. Um, I think it's Reckless Slash, or there, there's a card in DOA that's just a vanilla two cost three attack, mm -hmm. right? So you don't have to prepare this. So, you know, at worst, it's a vanilla two cost three attack, yeah. which isn't bad. However, I'm giving this a one, which is my first one. I think it's the first a, one I've heard today, for, yeah. For a specific reason of, I think people are going to get wrecked playing this card, basically. <laughs> I think that there's going to be, like... When you really look at this card, you're giving up a lot trying to activate it. You're giving up a card in hand, mm -hmm. right? You're giving up your champion attack, mm -hmm. and then you're you're giving up a prep counter, which is a very vital resource. Sure. And if that effect doesn't trigger, you've lost a lot, right? right. And the reason I'm giving it one star is because I think there's going to be a lot of people that try to play this card, give up all of those resources, and then they figure out... Three attack damage is not that hard to prevent. And the really important thing is on hit effects need to deal damage. Right. That's why it's a one star for me. For sure. I mean, for me, I gave it a two star because at, at worst, it's a vanilla three damage attack. Right. Or two. It does deserve uh, two. Yeah. Um, but me personally, I really, really, really try to stick away from cards that have this bad of yeah. a blowout potential. Yeah. Um, because if you do go all the way in, on this bad boy and you you prep it and everything else and then they do stop it yeah you <laughs> that's really a big yeah. oopsie yeah that's, yeah that feels really yeah. bad and i think I, that's why it's a one for me is because this for card sure. just screams bait yeah basically so we're going to move into this next section and i believe ron regalias yes yeah i believe we're going to rock into the normal regalias so talking about material deck cards yes um and I'll start us off. This first one is, um, so we got a plethora of these protective trinkets. And the first one is going to be the Azure Protective Trinket, Regalia Item, Cleric Accessory. Banish Azure Protective Trinket. Banish up to three target fire element cards from a single graveyard. What do you got to say about that, Kevin? Uh So I gave it a three, which might okay. seem low, mm -hmm. but I, I just think that no one's going to try to run fire element strategies in mm -hmm. the next set. Because sure. you're going to try to bring Erupting Rhapsody when I can do this guaranteed because it's in my material deck. Mm -hmm. So I know I have it in my hand and I probably draw one of my one, like four, one of my four squirrels, mm -hmm. raccoons. Yeah. You know, I, sorry. I love squirrels. <laughs> he, he you'll you'll learn squirrels. that about this channel. I love <laughs> squirrels. I don't know why, dude. One of the squirrels, one of the best cards from DOA. But anyways, you know, I mean, like I just, I would never roll up to Ascent, playing Erupting Rhapsody, knowing that my opponent can very easily, and for not that many resources, banish like five elements. Sure. Five, five fire elements from sure. my graveyard. Sure, right? I think it's definitely very meta-dependent. I gave yeah. it four stars because I think this card, forever, at least until they yeah. print something better, is an absolute all-star sideboard card. That's fair, yeah. So that being said, if fire is ever relevant in a meta, especially one that utilizes its graveyard, Yeah. This card is going to be a house. Yeah. So that's that. That's really where I got my rating from. Yeah. So basically, there's a trinket for each color. So ag for against each color, right. I should say. So we're going to talk about wins, which is a one cost crimson protective trinket. You banish it, and your opponent reveals two cards at random from their memory, uh, and you banish each wind element card revealed this way. So it is random, and that's a very important part of this card. I gave this a four. This yep. card, when you just read it, reads like the strongest card ever. Because sure. there is no other card that can potentially banish two cards from hand or memory or whatever you want to say. There's no other card that can do it. But there's some stipulations. So what did you rate this? I gave it a four as well. Okay. Because you already know I love hand hate. Yeah. So this <laughs> kind of goes right into that world. 
Um, and I think that wind currently, um, at least in set one, and I, I do think that they kind of push it into this set too, which we'll talk in another video, but they really do push that heavy wind deck. Yeah, yeah. Um, You're rewarded for having wind cards exactly, in your memory. Exactly, exactly. Now, that being said, I think a very, very good wind player um, could play around this card decently well. Um, but I think that with some of the other things that we've talked about, ways to get that information, way to yeah. see what is going on, um, you know, behind closed doors in their memory. Yeah. If you know what they have, if you have that information, this card could be pretty strong. Yeah. But I mean, imagine putting down Gwen, looking at their memory, mm -hmm. banishing one that you choose. So maybe you get rid of the norm that's in there. Yeah. And then you pop this because you know they have all win. Yeah. Now you just hit three cards from their memory. <laughs> that's devastating, yeah, right? Yeah, that's devastating. But like you said, good players can play around sure. it. Possibly. There might be some parts of the game where you can't, but... You know, again, I think people might get baited by this. They mm -hmm. might read, they might look at this card and be like, oh my gosh, I can get rid of two cards from my opponent. Mm -hmm. But, you know, a Regalia's cost, uh, kind of like standard, if it costs one, you know, it should be like drawing you a card and like giving you a little bit of a bonus sure. or something, right? This card's a little bit different because it's not drawing you a card, but it's like potentially getting rid of a card from your mm -hmm. opponent, which is a very similar thing, right? And, uh, you know, knowledge is important too. Mm -hmm. Even seeing two cards from your opponent memory can help you. Totally. But, you know, if you're playing against a good player and they, they only get rid of one card, then you're kind of almost just on par for sure. the cost of this card. And if you if you don't hit at all, that's that's rough, that's rough for yeah. sure. So yeah, but we are going to go into Tariff Ring, which is a zero cost regalia item. You banish it, and until end of turn, players can't declare attacks until they unless they play two for each attack declaration. Mm -hmm. Activate this ability only during your opponent's recollection phase. So. I did give this a four, mm -hmm. and I think that like it's a good semi-free turn option. Mm -hmm. It's not as strong as the other ones that we've seen that are like basically just stop all attacks, right? Right. But it's also not taking up too many resources. Materialization is very important in this mm -hmm. game, and it is taking that up. But it's a zero cost, you know. And the the rough part is that you do have to do it in the recollection, so mm -hmm. you have to do it basically before you really know what they're doing this turn. Sure. Um, but it does stop, you know, all attacks. Mm -hmm. It's not just attacks into your champion, so. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I think even aggro decks could use this to protect their own board, Definitely. right? And I, so we did already record this once, uh, unfortunately, and we had to redo it because of an audio issue. And I totally just stole that from you. <laughs> I forgot that that's what you said, and that wasn't one of my yeah, points. Yeah, so yeah, I'm yeah. sorry. No, no, no. Um, but it good. is a good point. That's yeah. why I took it. No, you know? totally. <laughs> I mean, honestly, this card to me, I gave it a three star because yeah. I, I think that obviously its effects very strong. Um, being able to make it so everything that they swing with this turn, so. If they want to do an onslaught turn, there's no way that they're doing an onslaught yeah, turn. Yeah. So, you know, things like that are very strong. And and like you said, as you brought up, I think that this card really shines when you are an aggressive ally deck. Because you're not going to play no one can attack. Exactly. You know, you're going to play this, your opponent can't attack. And if you're well. playing against another aggressive deck, this yeah. is going to put you way ahead. Yep, yep. So, for sure. That's, that. I mean, honestly, you said everything that needed to be said. Yeah. So. Uh, I'll read this one. We've got Tithe Proclamation, uh, Regalia Item, Cleric Scripture. I'm, I'm excited about this one. Uh, it's a one cost on enter draw card. Uh, players can't draw more than three cards each turn unless it's their first turn of the game, and that's a static effect. Um, so I'm going to tell you what I rated it, and I rated it a four. What did you rate it? A four. A four? Perfect. So for me, uh, coming from Magic... Uh, Older formats have a deck called Death and Taxes, and in Commander and other formats, we have these Stacks decks, which basically what they do is they put a bunch of effects like this, which are static effects that basically just tax the board, right? So decks that are trying to do things that aren't fair, things that combos, you know, break yeah. break the game, because at the end of the day, this card absolutely stops Rye, right? Right. The current right. Rye. So cards like this are exciting to me because it creates more fair gameplay. Yeah. So for me, I think this card is right now in its current state being one of, you know, the very few stacks effects that we have is a, in, in a Rye format, this card's insane. Yeah. I mean, Rye can draw anywhere from a couple cards to a turn to, to like their over 10, deck. 20. Yeah. yeah. I mean, it's, like, it's absolutely insane. Yeah. yeah. So this card is very strong. I do want to add to, cause it is relevant. It does cost one, but it draws you a card on that. Yeah. Card, right. Which, so, which 
So it is drawing you one. It is counting and taking a resource, you know, floating memory or something from your memory. Yeah. But you do get to draw a card. And I think that effect's pretty strong. Yeah, it is a reciprocal effect, but not every deck is going to draw four or five cards in a turn. Mm -hmm. So, you know, there's some decks that are going to have no problem playing this. Right. And it is fairly easy to kill. It's a one cost regalia. There's a lot of hate for those. Mm -hmm. You know, they, it can be destroyed, but the fact that it draws you that card, like you said, and the really neat thing is that if you're playing something like Zephyr, or sorry, uh, Wind, you could Zephyr this mm -hmm. to protect it when your opponent tries to pop it, and then that on enter is going to draw you an extra 100%. card, and you're protecting it for free now. You now you're Zephyr cycling. Exactly. And if right. Zephyr cycled, come yeah, on. yeah, come on, yeah. man. So. so. Uh, and then the last one that we're going to talk about, because we're actually going to make the Divine Relic of the set, Quick Stable Grail. We're going to do a whole video on that, just because there's there's a lot to talk about with that card. So this is the last card for the video, and I think maybe the best one, almost, yeah. I, in my opinion. It's a zero-cost Viridian Protective Trinket. So, like I said, there's a trinket for each color. Mm -hmm. This is the Water Hate one. You banish it during your turn, Water Element... Yeah, during your turn, water element cards your opponent activates cost two more to activate. So their counterplay on your turn is now going to cost more. And they actually did the first errata in the right. game, which now you don't even have to banish it. This no. card just reads on the field, it gets the effect where it's going to cost more. So I actually rated this a five before the <laughs> errata came out. Yeah. And that errata came out and like part of me went, oh my gosh, that's mm -hmm. just unbelievable right yeah. and then i've thought about it more and it definitely is a bone i mean obviously it's it's a buff right mm -hmm. but i think this card really shines like on your kind of kill turn because mm -hmm. if you bring this out early they can interact with it easier they can destroy it or whatever easier sure. but i think this is really like bring it out on your kill turn and just go now you can't stop me and swing at them sure so i don't think it having that permanent effect is like really like i don't think it makes it a 10 right sure. like i don't think it like doubles how good it is but um i do it is it, it's also we see with the other trinkets like you know you have to stop them it, the other trinkets are just a little bit more inconsistent sure. right and this one just reads bring it out and kind of stop right your opponent. and i mean this the stat the fact that this is static so i did this before the errata yeah. when we got it and i got to look through and this card was a four for yeah. me four star you know it's really strong i thought of it only in the world basically like your kill turn yeah but now that it reads as a static effect, so for, for zero, you bring out this regalia that just, during your turn, water element cards, your opponent activate, costs two more to activate, which is already an insane effect, mm -hmm. right? But now it's static, so it's gonna be there forever until they deal with it. Yeah. So against blue decks, um, this card is obviously just, it's one of the strongest cards you could play, especially in our blue video, when you guys watch it, you're gonna see that there's a lot more interaction. Yeah. This format, instead of just hey can i kill you before you kill me is my combo faster now there's going to be a lot more draw go interaction on each other's turns it's really really cool i really love to see that more fair um you know situations meta a lot of uh you know instead of just trying your best combo you get to actually play the game yeah so that being said i think that this card actually is insane because one thing to mention is it's during your turn, water element cards your opponent activate, right? Yeah. So it's not taxing all water cards. So you're not taxing yourself as a water player. But if you are in like a control mirror or in counter wars or some kind of blue v blue matchup, mm -hmm. this card's insane. And I think it's important to call out a blue card here, which yeah. is the first counter spell of the game. 100%. Um, because that is going to stop your, your kill turns. Yeah. So bringing this out and making that counter spell cost way more because two more is a lot. It I is. think this card would still be strong if it was one more, but two yeah. more starts to be like, you better have saved some cards, which yeah. they probably did. But now even if they drew and pass, they might only be able to play one of the cards that they wanted yeah. to and not two. Right. Yeah. So yeah, it's, it's, it's just a strong card. hundred percent. I, I mean, I can't tell you how excited I am to see all of these cards we talked about. Uh, I mean, Norm obviously is a little longer. There's a lot of Norm yeah, cards, yeah. but there's so much potential for this game, for this format, for this community on a competitive level, in a casual level, any Absolutely. way you want to play it. So I'm just so excited for a Grand Archive as well. Yeah, all. and it's really cool because we definitely felt that like you know water was lacking mm -hmm. a little bit in set one, and it feels like obviously we haven't hit the water spoilers yet, but it does really feel like they kind of like gave that a push. Totally, they gave Sylvie a push. You know, like they really did try to like round out how this game feels, mm -hmm. but then they also put in those silver bullets for that too because right. they were like, 
we don't i like i'm getting the feeling that they don't want to just make something op and then the next set they make the counter for it right yeah. like i that's such a relieving feeling totally. coming from games like Oh and sure. stuff. so it's really cool to see these super strong cards and then the answers to them in the set that don't destroy it mm -hmm. but help it stay balanced right this this by far for a two set game <laughs> moving into yeah. the set seeing the cards that were created to kind of combat that first well i mean it was 280 cards i guess yeah, so a big yeah. set but moving into this now i am so excited to see so many answers so many cards that can build different archetypes i yeah. mean we are just scratching the surface of what ga is no absolutely mm -hmm. i mean it, it's it's gonna be just so exciting yeah. i'm definitely really excited for the set to come out that's why we're talking about totally. it now you know like yeah. and hopefully we can start to spark some community discussions and you yeah. know get to deck building and stuff right. i, I want to get to deck building neither one of us had to have had a chance to do that no yet. And, uh, no so we're excited you know what i want from you guys if you have made it this far thank you <laughs> excited to have you yes but it, from the cards we talked about, the norm cards, I want you guys to comment below what your favorite card was and what you think might have the biggest impact on the meta moving forward. Um, but from there, man, I mean, do you want to give us a little goodbye? Give yeah. a little peace sign? We'll see you in the next video. There's plenty more. Peace. <laughs>